Welcome to another Quest Digest where I cover this week's Oculus Quest news in about five minutes. So let's take a look. First in the news, Oculus Connect is not called Oculus Connect anymore. It's now called Facebook Connect and it's happening September 16th. So what is Oculus Connect? It's a conference that shows off what's new from Oculus and the next chapter in VR. So now it's called Facebook Connect and you can watch it via the Facebook website or Oculus venues inside your headset. And so what can we expect from the newly titled Facebook Connect? For one, we know that John Carmack is speaking. John Carmack was the lead programmer in classic pioneering shooters like Doom and Quake and is now the consulting CTO for Oculus. Also, as it's been called Facebook Connect, we can expect other non-VR products to also be shown, such as Portal, which is a video calling device. They will also reveal the new name of the Oculus Quest. There's speculation that it will now be called Facebook Quest. Okay, okay, I'm only kidding, but it is expected they will reveal more details about this Oculus Quest 2 or Oculus Quest Lite, whatever it is. We know some things about it already, and I have a video on it in the description below, but some more details have emerged, such as leaks and speculation about the price of this new headset. There's apparently a 64 gigabyte and a 256 gigabyte version, and even the name has been leaked, Oculus Point Rays, but this is all speculation, should be taken with a massive grain of salt, and I guess we'll find out on September the 16th. A new update has also dropped, version 20, although it's nothing really to write home about, you can now mute people on a person by person basis in a party, there are also some new quest menu sounds, but the biggest change for me, you know when you put in your Oculus Link cable, it asks if you want to enable Oculus Link Beta every single time. Well, you don't have to put up with that anymore, and it will automatically enable file sharing without that second pop-up that always came up asking if you want the connected device to access files on your headset. Some clever people also checked out the code in this new update and find some new features that might be being introduced in the future, such as being able to cast your Oculus Quest to a supported browser such as Google Chrome, or having a tracked keyboard that allows you to see the keyboard in VR as you are typing, so you don't have to touch type in order to use a keyboard in VR. And here's what one of those pass through keyboards might look like. And this animation was also found, suggesting that it will now be easier to set up the Guardian when using your Oculus Quest on the couch. And another new Guardian animation was found showing that in the future there might be an easier way to increase the size of your Guardian once it's already set. And sticking with Reddit we also learn of a new virtual desktop update. You can purchase virtual desktop from the official Oculus Quest store and it allows you to connect to your computer, work on your desktop, watch movies and play games. I use it to play Half-Life Alex on my Quest wirelessly and it's a real game changer. One major feature of this update is a VR graphics quality option which allows you to adjust the graphical quality depending on the kind of rig you have. And there's also mention of a beta Mac version of Virtual Desktop coming soon. We've also seen a new trailer drop for Facebook Horizon and in this trailer you can see more of the types of games you can play with friends when we see this release. Now there is a closed beta you can sign up for and there are videos out there. One of the most comprehensive is this 90 minute video that takes you through all the different features by Insomnia Doodles. The video is pretty bad quality but it is very comprehensive. The thing I'm looking forward to most about this game is the ability to make your own worlds and make your own games for others to experience and play. Now onto the official Oculus Quest store and we see the release of Shooty Fruity which has about four and a half stars out of five from 11 ratings. This game tests your multitasking skills if you have to scan food whilst defending yourself from hordes of marauding fruit. We also have House Flipper which has about four out of five stars from 14 ratings. In this game you have to accept jobs, renovate places, earn money from your renovations and skills points to then purchase items, upskill and take on bigger jobs. There is also Until You Fall which is set to be released this fall. This is an arcade inspired hack and slash game 
that has already been released for PC VR and it has an overwhelmingly positive reception so I'm expecting big things of this one when it's released and right now if you go to the Rift store so not the Oculus Quest store but the Oculus Rift store it now has 41% off up until September 7th it also has cross buy so that when it's released on the Quest if you've bought it on the Rift already you get it for free on the Quest so you might be able to save a bit of money by buying it now on the Rift on September 3rd we'll also see the release of Falcon Age. This is a first person single player action adventure you play as Ara as you learn to hunt, gather and fight to reclaim your cultural legacy in the lost art of falcon hunting against a force of automated colonizers. And finally to the side quest store and we saw the release of Hyperstacks. Now I played and reviewed this game, you'll find the link to that video in the description below. Simply it's a must play game, it's an action puzzle shooter game, there's a level editor where you can make and publish your own levels, you can also play the levels that other people have created, so I can highly recommend this one. We also have the demo of Let's Go Chopping which will set you back 3 US dollars. This is a physics based VR combat shopping experience with zombies. There is also Questanoid, which is a Pong-like Arcanoid style game where you have to break the blocks. There are different block types and different power-ups in this retro inspired game. There's also Squash Up, where you choose your ball weight and racket style like you would do in a real squash game and hit the targets for points. Next up is Maintenance Room, where you are in a maintenance room on a spaceship and you get to play around with all sorts of cool objects like catapults, you get to break bottles, as well as play on an arcade machine, all while hurtling through space. And finally we have Wild Zone which has two square kilometers of terrain and a really interesting locomotion system where you can walk, jog or run on the spot to move your character in game. I think there needs to be more experimentation done with how to pull off locomotion in the VR successfully and realistically as we still have a long way to go with this. Anyway, that's about it for me for now. Hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll catch you next time. Bye -bye.